Hey everyone, I'm John Sasson and today we're taking a look at the Sony 12-24mm f2.8 G Master lens. Now this was newly announced by Sony not too long ago and I actually have it on loan just to see how well this lens fares and what you can actually expect from it. So obviously this is a G Master lens. It's actually the 11th, I think, in its G Master lineup. So there is there are quite a number of lenses that you can actually choose from. This is going to be the widest that Sony offers in an f2.8 aperture in a zoom lens. There is a lot of technology, a lot of lens features, and I guess a lot that you can expect out of a G Master lens. Now, right off the bat, I don't think it's going to be that cheap. In fact, because it is a G Master lens, you can expect to pay a premium for this. But in saying that, you aren't going to be disappointed. Well, I hope you aren't because I am certainly impressed with what this lens has to offer. And I have been shooting with this for a few days now and whoa, this is amazing. I have been using it on the Sony a7R 4 So here is a quick first look of what you can expect from the 12 to 24. The lens is constructed of high quality plastics and metals. It feels solid in the hand and has a great build to it and has some heft to it weighing in at 847 grams. It is front heavy but still feels great when used with the a7R4 and it actually feels like a perfect match. It's very much like the build of other GM lenses. It's dust and moisture resistant around the mounts and other areas where unwanted debris can get in. The lens has a focus switch and a focus hold button which can be customized for different settings in the menu. The focus ring sits in front of the zoom ring and has a lens hood that can't be detached. This serves to block out any flare from the sun and other light sources but can also serve as some sort of protection from damaging or scratching the front element of the glass. Speaking of that, the lens is convex, meaning it's curved outwards. It doesn't accept screwing filters, but Sony has implemented a rear filter holder where you can actually get a standard sheet type ND or other filters inserted into it. A cutting template is also supplied along with a specialized front lens cap. With a minimum focusing distance of 28 centimeters, it keeps up with the standard compared to other lenses from other manufacturers, but gives a reasonable amount of working distance if you want to photograph something that is relatively close. All right, so I'm currently shooting at a creek and you know, I think for once in my life, I don't have to speak too loud because it is just so quiet here. It's so peaceful, but at the same time, it's a bit eerie. Um, yeah, just to let you know, I am shooting with the 12 to 24. This is at its widest setting in 4K. So if you're not shooting or viewing this video already in 4K, do it because you're gonna see so much detail. But um, I guess this is just to give you an idea of what you can expect. <laughs> when filming yourself with this lens just to show you how much you can actually fit into the frame. Now, obviously you wouldn't use this for vlogging. I would recommend maybe a Sony 21.8 or a 24 mm f1.4, but yeah, this is, there's so much you can fit. I mean, I am having a hard time holding this steady because my arm is getting pretty tired, but yeah, anyway, back to the video. Now let's quickly talk about the glass. The lens features three extreme spherical lenses, two super extra low dispersion glass, and three ED elements with nano AR coating too. Focusing is enhanced by four XZ linear motors, meaning it's going to be extremely fast, precise, and accurate for tracking. To get the most out of this lens, I was using the Sony a7R4, straight out of the camera and no post-processing, just so you can get an idea of what this lens has to offer. Now judging from the images, I love what I'm seeing. It's sharp corner to corner. There is clearly some distortions, but it's actually well handled. And what's cool is I didn't see any vignetting and I saw zero chromatic aberration. There is some lens flare, which I personally don't mind, but everyone has their own different tastes. But one thing that I do love is the colors that I get out of this lens. It's pleasing and has a bit of contrast to it as well. So it's something that I actually do appreciate. When it comes to the bokeh, it's smooth and pleasing. That's thanks to its 9 aperture blades and f2.8 aperture. There's also no stabilization, which is also common among wide-angle lenses. 
All of these photos were shot in RAW and then converted to JPEG. Now, what can I say about this lens? Other than the fact that, you know, it is a G Master and it is Sony, so that makes me excited even more. Just having that constant f2.8 aperture really makes this lens flexible for when you're shooting in challenging lighting situations. And you know, because of the, the front element being so curved and not being able to put filters, having that rear filter holder does make a difference, especially if you wanna shoot landscapes and not want to make your kit too big, especially because, you know, when it comes to bulbous front element lenses, you do need to get a filter holder. And this sort of pretty much just gives you the option to use the rear filter or maybe just use a filter holder. So, I mean, Sony weren't the first ones to come out with this. I think, you know, you got Sigma as well that were coming out in the mirrorless mount. Now, I don't expect this to be a cheap lens. I think it's going to be quite expensive, especially when you factor in what this lens has to offer. But, you know, if you want the best, I guess you're going to have to pay a premium amount for it, unfortunately. But having this, I mean, it doesn't feel, it feels front heavy, but you know, when you're using it with the Sony a 7 r 4 you do have that extra grip to make it feel a bit more robust and having all those weather seals all makes it a lot easier as well and more reassuring. So I'm gonna pretty much enjoy the rest of my time that I have with this lens and shoot more landscapes and you know, feel more content. And you know, if you have any more questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and remember to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more Sony lens reviews and tutorials. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more sample photos and photo updates. And until then, happy shooting and thanks for watching.